Hey y'all, William T. Pungo Prairie. Farm to table eateries seem to be all the rave these days, but I just can't help but wonder how many of us actually understand what it takes to get those mouth-watering entrees and delicious side dishes from the farm to the table. Personally, I like knowing where my food comes from, and one way I do is by producing or harvesting whatever I can, whenever I can. In this video, I'm going to invite you all to come along with me on a little whitetail deer hunt where I'm bringing the harvest of the forest to the table and show you all the little steps in between. So if you think you're up for it, don't go nowhere because you don't want to miss this. Well, he was on the move, and I really didn't have a chance to get the camera on him and not risk not being able to shoot him too, but my hunting time's growing a little short, and it's just a little buck, but I'm out of venison, <laughs> and I sure don't need another one to hang on the wall. He's laying over there about 60 yards. One quick, clean shot. I don't know if you can see him or not. But he's laying right there in the center of the frame. You can see the white. Besides, I've been needing to shoot a video on how to cook up deer heart. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't mess it up too bad.
<laughs> uh, let's go check him out. Frosty this morning. With this clover here. This power line. That's gonna be some good eating right there, y'all. Nice little buck. Gonna make for some great venison suppers there. No doubt. Alright, let's get him gutted out. Roll up your sleeves for this one. <laughs> First time in my life I have ever gutted a deer or anything else for that matter with a pair of gloves on. But old Ron was up here a few weeks ago, I think it was Ron, left a box of them, and I said, <laughs> why not? Alright, little fella, I'll tell you, the best part about this is I'm going to be able to drive the mule right to him. I don't know how to drag him, all I got to do is lift him. He was quartering away. I shot right in there behind that shoulder. He took about a hop or two and that was it. Right up in the center of that brisket. I actually have another knife in my pack. It's got like a, a gut hook on it. it. Makes it a little bit easier for not puncturing any entrails, hold with your two fingers and hold that open. I lost my favorite knife up here a couple weeks ago. Sure would like to have it about now. Cut that diaphragm. Free all that up. This side here. Feels like the heart's in pretty good shape. I'm gonna tear the tenderloins. Careful with that. Let's see what we got here. I might have nicked the heart a little bit. But overall, it's pretty good shape. Okay. I'm just going to lay it right there a minute. Cut that bladder out of there without hitting urine on the meat. That's good. You always keep Ziploc bag in your pack. And that way, you got something for your heart. All righty. There's our liver. Put right that in that same old stack. I'm gonna leave that open so it can cool out there a little bit. Drain all that blood out. All right. <laughs> That's the worst of that. The gloves, they did all right. Let me get too much blood on me. <laughs> it don't get no better than that, y'all. It don't get no better than that. No long drag down on the top of the mountain. Another set of hands would be good right about here. We're gonna see what we can do. <laughs> he ain't that heavy until you go trying to lift him by yourself. 
Should have brought a my come along, huh? <laughs> Trying to haul the body off at the scene of the crime. <laughs> Need an accomplice. <laughs> I'll try something different. In my age, in this point in life, you gotta work smarter, not harder. <laughs> Getting out of that blood anyway, huh? Got him in the box now. Tally dog. <laughs> Tally dog, what is it? What is it, Tally? <laughs> what are you doing, Tally? We gotta cook it first, baby. Tally girl, what is that? I don't know, Daddy. That's a dog with horns on it, Daddy. Tell the girl, we gotta get her turned, get him turned around here. That one there. That one there. Yeah, right there. Wyoming saw for this, but I left the meat blade at home. Leaving everything at home this year, Tally Dog. Yeah, damn glad you didn't leave me at home. Yeah, let's see here. I got our liver and heart all cleaned off good. I'm just gonna trim it up here. I'm gonna have this liver for dinner tonight. Well, I'm gonna cross cut it. I'm gonna start kind of take a thin shave and get a nice even slice. I'll go here with about five eighths of an inch or so slices, a little better than a half inch. When you get a little piece like that right there, I'm just gonna cut that little section right there out because that's a little chewy. Now I've got a video on this with most of y'all, I say most of y'all, a lot of y'all have already seen on how to fry up venison liver and I was gonna do one of the heart when I did that one 
but I never got around to it. So tomorrow night, we're going to cook up the heart. Now, I was trying not to hit the heart. I wanted to keep it intact. But uh, because it was a downward angle, I was up in that box blind. It was a downward angle, and the deer was kind of quartering away from me. I mostly took out the lungs, but I just did get a little nick in the heart right here. But I don't think it's going to mess it up too bad. Tally girl, this is going to be some good supper tonight, baby. Yeah, daddy. I see already it's going to be good. Get your nose out of there. You'll get some, but not right yet. All right, these ones we're going to have for dinner tonight. I'm putting this little Ziploc bag here. Tally girl, you're licking your chops, aren't you, baby? <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to put those slices right here in this little Ziploc bag. And I usually like to soak this liver in buttermilk. But I don't have any buttermilk, so I'm just going to use regular whole milk. I'm just going to soak that liver in that milk till we're ready to fry it up a little later on this evening. And these little pieces I trimmed up from that small lobe, we're going to saute up in some olive oil for Tally Girl. We got our liver soaking in the milk there. We're going to just let our heart kind of dry age next to that bag of ice in this little cooler, baby. Some liver and ice for supper. Life is good, Tally Girl. Nothing like a campfire baked potato. Okay, had our nice little liver slices soaking in that milk. Got them all coated up here with the breading. And I didn't get into a whole lot of detail about that because I got a whole video on that. Y'all can go see venison heart and liver where actually I only cooked the liver. So we're going to brown that up. On a nice high heat with a little oil and butter in there. We got our onions going on over here. All right, just about right. 
Give it a little flip. <laughs> what I'm talking about. When that blood gets boiling up on top, that's when you want to flip it. Oh yeah, man. Look at them onions. They're coming along now. Nice little brown on them. All right, let's get these off of here. Just sit our liver right there and keep it warm a second. Uh -huh. Got our onions and that handle is hot. Peas in the can here, a little stir around. Oh, oh tell it dog. That's what I'm talking about, baby. I'm set it down right there. And that's a hot potato. With a meal like this, you know we gotta light Miss Laura's cozy camp candle. And some nice brown gravy right over top. Cali girl, come here, baby. Come here. Come here. Come here. Y'all, this is as good as it gets. I'm gonna tell you something. We have had Maine lobsters flown in from Maine and delivered FedEx here. Our buddy Scott did that and it was, what an amazing, amazing meal that was. It was two years ago. But this fresh killed venison liver right here on this plate, I don't know. I don't know if I'd trade it for one of them main lobster tails as much as I love Scott and all of his diligence in getting them delivered here. Cali girl. We had a good day, didn't we, Daddy? Huh? Yeah, didn't we? We had a good day, didn't we, baby? Dear Lord, amazing Father, God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Thank you so much for this time with this little brown dog here in these mountains. Friends and family that have come and gone and little tally girl and me are here right now. And this morning, you brought me the bounty of the field. Good meat, good harvest. It's been, uh, it's been a challenging hunt. I'm not after antlers, I got plenty of those hanging on the wall, but I'm out of venison, and you provided today. Thank you, Lord. I praise you for it. This amazing meal. Bless it to nourish our bodies and strengthen us for a life in thee. And thank you for this little brown dog that's keeping me company all this time. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen, Tally Girl. Tally Girl. That was a good supper, wasn't it, baby? <laughs> yeah, dude, that was a good supper. Oh my goodness, that was a good supper. I uh, want to tell you one thing, little dog. God was good to us today. Yeah, dude, God was good to us. God's good to us every day. Yes, he is, Tally girl. And he brought us that little buck this morning. Oh, right on time. Seven. What was it? Seven forty. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at my watch down here in the tent, sleeping in my little doggy jail. And tell it, girl, you're lying to me. No, daddy, I heard the shot. <laughs> tell it. little blowtorch here just kind of singes off any of those little pieces of hair. So easy way to clean it up. Perfect. Okay, it's time to prepare our deer heart so we can cook up our chicken fried venison deer heart steak. And a lot of people when they're going to cook venison heart, and I do this sometimes, 
they'll just slice it across like so and make medallions maybe about an inch or half inch thick or so but for our chicken fried steak we're gonna unroll our heart and we're just gonna fire uh, follow these natural little separations of the chamber just like so see how you got that chamber there we're just going to unroll our heart it's just like unwrapping a Christmas present now we had a little bit of trauma from where that bullet hit the top of it now, I'm going to cut that out of there I'm going to cut this part right here out off the top where that tendon is or whatever and I'm going to take and trim off that little piece of trauma right there clean that up a little bit and then we're just going to take and kind of thinly fillet off this inner membrane because it's a little bit tough and we're going to get right to that good tender meat and we're going to do the same thing over here kind of cut that one away open it up a little bit get a little fat off of there and then we're going to just kind of fillet off see those tendons that constrict that muscle to make it pump we're going to cut all that out of there because we don't want a chewy chicken fried venison steak get this little bit of trauma right here and just trim that little piece for aesthetics huh make it look appetizing one more little piece right there all right, so this we're just going to discard or feed to the cat or tally girl. And what you got here is two, well, one unraveled heart, but you've got two really nice cuts to separate right there that we're going to make our chicken fried steak out of. And right here, I got this meat mallet. And we're going to pound out that, that heart, those two pieces. And we're going to use this little diced up side here so we can kind of cube it up like a cube steak. This is going to tenderize it. And it's going to kind of flatten it out a little bit. Flip it over and get this side. You wouldn't even have known that's a deer heart if you hadn't seen me cut it out of that deer's chest yesterday, now would you? Now I'm all about, once you get your meat processed, making it look appetizing. And right here I'm just going to go with a little bit of this pink Himalayan sea salt, just a little teeny bit, because there's a bit of salt in the uh, breading mix and some of this pepper here, fresh cracked pepper, and so we'll get both sides. Okay, I'm taking our little cubed up deer heart here, I'm going to roll it in this chicken breader. A lot of times I will make up my own breader, but for expediency here in camp, I'm just using some house altered chicken breader. I'm going to roll it right in that egg wash, one more dusting off with it in the breader. Some nice coating on it there. This breader has some seasoning in it. That's why I didn't want to use too much of the other. I'm going to go right here on this little rack. And now we're going to get the other. If you wanted to, you could add some panko breadcrumbs to this. Get a little bit of extra crispiness going on. We're going to let it rest on that little rack. If you use it at home, you can put it in a refrigerator for about 30 minutes or so um, to kind of let that breading let the moisture evaporate out of it a bit it's going to help you fry up a little bit crispier but it's cool enough here in camp where I'm just going to let it rest there on that little stump 
Okay, y'all, I got our onions sauteing up in here with a little seasoning and butter in this iron skillet. Right now, I'm going to add our mushrooms. And over here, I've got a potato, a campfire baked potato left over from the other night that I'm frying up in this oil for some home fries. I'm going to add just a little bit of this heaven made, it's incredible, to those onions and mushrooms right there. And I'm going to add just a little splash of apricot brandy. In goes our dear heart. Right here into a little bit of vegetable oil. I'm just giving it about two and a half minutes or so until that blood starts rising on top. And that tells us we got a good golden brown going on the other side. We're going to give it about maybe a minute and a half now. That's all it's going to need. Okay. Just check it. I think we are there. I'm just going to put it on this little paper plate right here. We got some of our onions and mushrooms. I'm just going to put a little bit of that on each one of these steaks right here. We got our fried potatoes. Excuse my fingers. I'm going to put those right there. This is that country gravy. We're going to just Spoon that right over top. Look how nice and thick that is. I saved the water from the mushroom can and added that into the gravy. Some leftover peas from last night's venison and liver dinner. We don't want those to go to waste. Oh my goodness. Would you look at that, right there. We're gonna light Miss Laura's cozy camp candle because this is a meal worthy of it. And I made a nice little salad here with fresh romaine, tomatoes, carrots, celery, and Greek olives. Would you look at this? What an amazing meal. The fruit of the bounty of the field that God has blessed us with here in this little camp alongside that little creek running out there is called Bratton's Run. Precious Lord God Almighty, thank you so much for this time here and your beautiful, majestic mountains for the harvest of the field, the fruits of our labor, and delivering us this tasty, nutritious meal. Dear Lord, I pray for our families, my family, the families of all of those watching this video and Lord thank you so much for them as we are coming upon another Thanksgiving which is so different this year nevertheless we will be having Thanksgiving in spite of what some of the politicians say you can't gather stay home we're going to be giving thanks and thank you now for this amazing abundance upon my table. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, y'all. I've just got to show you this so you know I'm not kidding. I'm going to cut it right here in the middle. Look at that. Huh? Did you look at that? Right there. That's what I'm talking about. Perfect. That's perfect. Now you know I've been dying to dive into this. 
<laughs> hmm. Now I'm gonna tell you something, y'all. That right there, that's some hearty, good comfort food. And that, girls and boys, which was cooking on the Pungo Prairie. <laughs> Come and get you. Oh, tell you, girl. The lantern went out. That's all right. We got good hot water here to do these dishes with. Tell you, girl. We had a good couple of days, didn't we, baby? We got deer skin out today. We had to drive all the way to Fishersville to get the little cast iron Dutch oven that they were supposed to deliver here to camp. They couldn't find us. So we can do our campfire Dutch oven Thanksgiving roast turkey. So we're going to make an attempt to do that tomorrow. Tell you how we have had a good day. And that deer hunt, oh my goodness. Is that good or what, baby? I tell you, it's been a blessed day for us. Alongside this little creek, this little creek bottom, they call it Braddon's Run. girl I guess we better go ahead and get this deer cut up I want to let it hang another day but two days of borderline temperature better go ahead and get it in these pans and set in the cooler on ice I'll tell you that was a pretty good shot the way I shot it because going at an angle quartering like that that bullet went in here he kind of came out right against the base of the neck and didn't really mess up either one of these shoulders. I mean, that was pretty good. <laughs> each side of it like so and fillet that meat right off of that shoulder all right let's get this back strap out of here and then just fillet that loin right on away from the ribs the top of the ribs the back ribs just like that Same thing to the other side. Perfect. All right. Two pretty back straps. Now we're going to get our tenderloin. A lot of folks refer to the back strap as the tenderloin, but actually, that's the loin. And the tenderloin is inside, right here, these two little strips. That would be equivalent to your tenderloin of beef. Some people call it the sweet meat. You just kind of carve that out, and the little cavity that it's in there, kind of like a cavity. Staying close to the bone. You want to get as much of it as you can. 
see and that's a really nice tender cut it's good to grill up fresh just gonna kind of square that little tail off all right a little bit of that kidney fat off of there now I think I'm gonna cut each one of our back straps a loin in four pieces I'm gonna cut it in half and then in half again that way when I'm cook it up I like to do that uh, what they call Jen Lolly's recipe, venison Bordeaux back strap. That right there will serve two people. On the outside is this silver skin. I like to leave that on there when I freeze it because it helps to protect it from freezer burn. And then I'll I'll fillet that off, shave that off when I cook it, because that's a that's a pretty tough membrane right there. Put our loin right here in our uh, pan with our tenderloins and these are these are some of the uh, front part of that loin against that neck it's still a pretty tender chunk of meat that'll be good in a stew or chili I always like to add a little bit of meat like that to my ground meat when I'm making chili. Alright, let's get to hams. Now I'm going to work my knife right on around this pelvic bone here and separate that ham, fillet it off of that pelvic bone and then separate it right at the ball and hip joint which is going to be right along in here. And the other thing you can do just come right around back into the spine and cut it on this side and that'll help give you a guide of how to get around that pelvic bone you work your knife right around that bone like that and then just fillet it right on off now some folks will cut those back straps back a little farther like that and get this piece right here but I like to keep that attached to the ham for now because there's a lot of different things you can do with this and it really doesn't matter it's just a matter of preference I guess or what you prefer I like to keep that for sirloin and what you do here you just work the tip of your knife right around that ball and socket joint at that hip bone now I've got it just about free but I'm gonna work on the other side and get that just about free so I don't have to we're about working on this thing lopsided for very long. You'll, you'll see what I mean here in a second. We got that side free. And we'll come back in here and just get this other one. See, that's what I'm talking about lopsided. <laughs> see, it goes lopsided. It pinches the knife against that bone that you're trying to work away from. <laughs> We got us a pair of swinging hams. Okay, we're just gonna trim these hams up a little bit before we get them on the table. So we're gonna break them down <laughs> into uh, the different cuts we want. All right, we're gonna trim out our ham here to probably about uh, four different roasts if we're going to count this little piece up here. And we're going to follow our, um, our natural separations. Kind of gives you a guide to go by. And down here, this will be our bottom round, this will be our top round. And this section right here, to me, we're going to cut out of there is our broil. And if you've ever seen 
my video, Black and Venison Broil, that actually was inspired by my good friend Jennifer Lolly, who wrote Hunt and Gather uh, the Cookbook. It's really her recipe, and I did a video of her doing it. And you can't believe how tender and delicious this cut of meat is. I really like it better than the loin, the back strap. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is flip our ham over to the inside because I want to cut follow that bone and it's easier to do that from the inside before I start uh, separating these different cuts and I'm going to get it right away from our bone and the bone kind of runs at an angle so it folds you to where you think see it's kind of coming back this way towards this I guess it's a knee joint. But keep your knife right on that bone as you go down, and you can't go wrong. We've got our knife riding right on that that bone. That bone will come right on out of there. You're gonna get right here to this joint, and we're gonna go cut our meat through those tendons right on away from that knee joint. And what we're going to end up with here is our whole ham completely boned out. There you go. Now we're going to keep going on the inside here following the natural separations of our different muscles God kind of gave us a plan here for how to do this and then just cut right on through with that natural separation now remember I showed you I want to show you something here remember I showed you on the other side those lines you could follow see how when you follow that separation from the inside you're right on that line but by doing it from the inside, you can see what your muscles are that you want to save a little easier without getting a skew with your cut. Remember I told you our broil? It's going to be this piece right here. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go right here. Move this out of the way a minute. I'm going to go right here. And follow this natural separation right like so see we're really not even cutting into the muscle we're just cutting the membrane away between the muscles now look where we are see we're right right on that line right here we can Go right on down it if we want, but if you continue to follow the membrane, you're going to end up cutting. Your cut's going to be right on that line. All right, this section on our top round where it was kind of getting down towards that that uh, knee joint, this is pretty tough. I'm going to square that off right there. This in our grind for burger pan here you've got a couple of options you can make two roasts out of that if you want and I'm not exactly sure how, what I'm going to do yet but while we're still kind of going to be in the dry aging process when I put this thing in the cooler I'm not even going to worry about cutting that right now and I'm not even going to trim that right now I'm going to let this venison continue to age on ice in these pans but on our bottom round section I'm going to kind of trim that up just a little bit um, and show you where I'm going to separate that piece that wrapped around up to the, the top round that little sirloin piece I was telling you about we're going to go ahead and cut that free okay this is our bottom round but this piece wrapped up towards the top to where that uh, back strap is this is that little 
piece of sirloin I was telling you about. And this is a good tender cut. That's some good tender tender muscle tissue right there. And I'm going to put this over here with our more tender cuts for right now. There's a muscle in here. I'm going to go ahead and show you that is in that bottom round. It's like a bottom round roast, but I actually call it a silver tip roast. And I guess I call it that because this fellow I was hunting up with in Canada from New Jersey called it that. Kind of looks like a silver tip bullet if you use your imagination. You follow this natural separation around on this bottom round you'll see this pretty little it's almost like a little football shape roast and it makes great smoking and I might do that on a video while I'm still here in camp because I had one fella maybe two or three fellows that asked about a smoked venison video and I actually do have a whole smoked venison ham recipe but uh, I might just do this up at camp. See how that, if you use your imagination, it could be almost like a silver tip bullet or a football. That's a great cut of meat. Sliced up thin with some horseradish sauce after you smoke it for sandwiches. Okay, the last thing I'm going to share with you right now in our processing of our deer is how I'm going to do a final trim on our broil. That was kind of not really top round or not really bottom round, but kind of the, the side of the hip. And we're going to start just like this. I'm just going to square it off. Not that there's anything wrong with keeping this attached, but the way I like to cook it, this would get way too done. So I'm going to add this little trim piece over here to our burger pan all right now we're going to come over here and just kind of square that little tail off also now this is still good tender meat that could be good for stew and chili burger i'm going to put it in the stew and chili pan now i just want to uh trim this a little bit for you so i can show you how pretty this roast is i'm going to take some of this tendon off outside here just working close to it because I don't want to see how I'm just taking that almost like that silver skin away normally I would go ahead and freeze it like that with it intact remember because I said it helps protect against freezer burn but I really want to show you this roast how pretty it is see those tendons you don't want it have those tendons in there when you're cooking this so that's why we're trimming those away we can grind that up in our burger all right and we're going to do the same thing on this side just right like so get that little silver skin away from there now look at this meat right here you've seen a london broil right does that grain look familiar to you from a London broil uh, in a beef? Especially what you have here. But this is a whole lot more tender than a beef London broil, believe it or not, from this wild deer. We're going to do the same thing. Just a thin shave right here, like I said, because I want to show you the finished broil here. I think this is the most unsung heroic special part of the whole deer right here this should be cooked like a fine steak now isn't that a beautiful cut of meat right there I'm gonna go ahead and leave this outside membrane on because it's going to help protect it if it gets to the freezer but you get the general idea of what a beautiful uh, piece of meat this is. And before I cook it, I'll just take a nice long fillet knife and run it across 
the bottom with that side down and just shave that membrane off. This right here, like I said, is the most underrated cut in the whole deer. And you really do need to check out my video, Black and Venison Broil, either the one I did or the one I did of Jen Lolly, because after all, it is her recipe um, from her cookbook, Hunt and Gather. Well, you know what hunters say when they shoot a little buck? You can't eat the horns, but you sure can eat this. Oh my goodness. That's what I'm talking about. That's a lot of meat out of one little buck. <laughs> yes, it is. We've got our roast. We've got our loin, our back straps. We've got our roll roast. We've got our broil. Oh my goodness. We got our tenderloins here. All this back strap. 10 pounds of burger. But this right here, this, that little buck yielded 31 pounds, I'm sorry, 33 pounds total. There's 23 pounds of meat on this tray. 10 pounds here, that's 33 pounds. Yep, 33 pounds of pure, wholesome, nutritious food that I know where it came from. Do you know where your food came from? Well, we've all heard how in vogue it is these days to go from the farm to the table. Well, this boys and girls right here, this is from the forest to the table, or at least halfway to the table, because we still have to decide which delicious recipes we're gonna cook up with this beautiful venison that we've got all processed here. 